Hey guys, it's Marcus Maloney, the Equity King, coming to you once again. It's the day after Thanksgiving. Um, hope you had a wonderful holiday. Hope you spent time with family and friends um, and had a wonderful meal. Hope you did that. Um, we did as well. And in the midst of our conversation over dinner, we, we were discussing what I do and how I do it. Uh, we were the host this year for Thanksgiving, so people had quite a few questions for me once they came into my office and see the things that I had up on the board and you know papers around and things like that. Um, so we were discussing, it became a debate about wholesaling and assigning contracts. So I just wanna go into that. Um, I previously stated and went over the wholesale contract one-on-one in a prior video. I had tons of questions about the assignment agreement and assignment contract. So I wanna go over that and what I'm going to do before I get started, I'm going to read you verbatim our assignment agreement and you can find this assignment agreement free of charge at equityrealestateblog.com. Um, just for a little housekeeping, make sure you have your attorney review it. Um, laws are different in each state and I wanna make sure you are abiding by the laws of the land, okay? So here's our, our assignment contract verbatim. Again, you can find that and then I'll go through some of the key things that we have in this contract. That way you can uh, make sure you have a clear understanding when discussing the agreement with the end buyer. So, assignment of residential purchase contract in consideration of the sum of, that's the amount of money, along with earnest money as defined below, the, and other goods and valuable consideration and mutual benefits to deliver by all parties to this agreement, the undersigned assignor does hereby assign to assignee all rights, interests, suits, claims, and titles to a, to a contract of sale dated by and between the purchaser and the seller. This contract is concerning such property known as property address. Provided, however, no warranties of any kind whatsoever are made incident to this agreement and the new buyer accepts all rights, obligations, and responsibilities of purchase contract executed by uh, equity Realty and Investments, which is the wholesaler. So you just put your name and that that place. Disbursement of assignment assignment fee shall be as follows. Uh, you write down the total assignment fee, and upon close and pay through title, break down to be as follows. Your assignment fee, if you JV with someone, their JV uh, amount, and if you're a realtor such as I am, you would have your broker uh, fee in there so that will come directly from title directly and all funds will be dispersed directly from title excuse me um, in addition to the assignment consideration assignee agrees to deposit earnest money in the amount of x into escrow which will become non-refundable at the close of business day um and then you just insert a date there as long as the seller can produce clear title. Earnest money to be deposited within 24 hours of executed assignment agreement. Otherwise, this assignment will no longer be valid um, to the assignee. In the event the buyer does not perform, the earnest money deposit will be released to the assignor when then would be released to the wholesaler will resume the original contract and the assignment will no longer be valid to the buyer. The assignee permits the title company to provide the wholesaler basically with a copy of the settlement statement after an actual close of escrow. Inspection period on the assigned purchase contract will no longer be applicable to the buyer. Um, equity Realty and Investments or your name, earnest money of whatever amount that you put up with the original seller, your earnest money will be refunded directly back to you upon the receipt of the assignee's earnest money. So basically that's just saying that 
if you put up a thousand dollars earnest money deposit or a hundred dollars earnest money deposit and then the um, cash buyer then goes and put up their non-refundable earnest money deposit that means that the title company will then reimburse you your earnest money deposit so then you have absolutely no money in the deal so let's kind of go over this um, I know I read through that pretty quickly and again I know um, as I stated before that you can get that assignment agreement at equityrealestateblog.com and we have other additional um, documents procedures policies um, on that site as well so first of all what you need to have um, on the assignment agreement is the amount of money that you agreed to that your cash buyer agreed to purchase the property for. So if you got the property under contract for 100,000 and your cash buyer um, agreed to pay $110,000 for the property, then your assignment fee um, will be close to $10,000. And the reason why I say close to $10,000 because there may be some small uh, incidental fees that you would have to pay out of that money. Um, you would need to have the assignor's name, which would be you, the wholesaler, who have the contract with the original, with the original seller, and then you would have the assignee, which would be your cash, cash buyer. Okay, so pretty simple. The amount your name as the wholesaler and the cash buyer's name or entity name. Then you need to have the contract date. What date um, was wrote on the original contract? So the contract between you and the original seller, you need to add that date onto this assignment agreement. Um, you need to have the original purchaser's name. So this would be the wholesaler. Seller, sorry. And then you would need to have the original seller's name, which would be, let's just say, John Doe. And then again, you need to have the property address. And once again, as I stated, everything, the contract is self-explanatory. Just make sure you have a review by your attorney. We use this contract, not only this assignment agreement, not only in Arizona, but we also use it in Illinois as well. So those two states, if you're in those two states, you'd be able to use this agreement um, immediately. They already been approved by attorneys. Uh, but again, have your attorney to review the documents. You need to have the property address. And then one thing that I read that is very important is that there's no warranties. The new buyer accepts all rights, obligations, and conditions of the property and this is including that the property is being purchased as is so that refers back to the no warranty so make sure you have this line here on your assignment agreement and then next uh, what you want to have is the assignment disbursement so we know that the assignment fee is going to be ten thousand dollars because the original purchase amount was 100K that you agreed to between you and the original seller and then your cash buyer agreed to pay $110,000. So now the assignment disbursement is going to be $10,000. The difference between the original purchase price and the assignment purchase price. So then in the assignment disbursement, we would have, um, for example, 10,000 going to the wholesaler. And then if you have a broker or if you're JVN, you would make sure you disperse this $10,000 accordingly. So if it was a 50-50 JV agreement, so then the wholesale fee would be 5K to you and then 5K to the other, other wholesale. That way the title company knows exactly who to cut checks to and 
and who to cut checks to and, and for how much. So you need to make sure you have the names here. Um, also, the assignee's earnest money deposit. So the cash buyer's earnest money deposit amount should be here. And all of this information needs to be on this assignment agreement because you're submitting these documents over to the title company or the closing attorney. And you want to make sure they have everything that they need in order to process this transaction as swiftly as possible. Um, so the assignee's earnest money deposit. And then remember, please remember, this is non-refundable. So if they, your cash buyer put up the earnest money deposit and let's just say it's $2,500 and then it comes um, a week later and they say, well, you know what, I don't want to go through with the, with the, with the transaction. Um, my contractor said, you know, that the work, the scope of the work is going to be over and above what we anticipated. Okay, sorry, too bad. We hold that $2,500 earnest money deposit and us as the wholesalers, we keep that money. All right, um, so buyers non-perform, oh, almost forgot. The assignee earnest money deposit submission deadline. This cash buyer, we always have a 24 hour turn time. So once they sign this assignment agreement, they have 24 hours to get this non-refundable earnest money deposit into the title company they don't make this 24 hour deadline, then that this agreement becomes null and void. Unless, normally if you if you worked with a, with a buyer, you know, and done quite a few deals with them, then this deadline is not as hard. But normally, cash buyers, when they're ready to move, they know what they want, they know that they want it. In this day and time, um, deals are harder to come by uh, for some, so uh, they go in and they drop that earnest money deposit immediately. So uh, just make sure you have that on the contract. So now, uh, buyer's non-performance. What happens, again, if your cash buyer doesn't perform? Number one, you get to hold on to this earnest money deposit. So immediately, you made $2,500 on a contract that is now null and void. No questions asked. Uh, the title company will disperse those funds immediately to you. Um, what, uh, what else happens if the buyer does not perform? Then a sign or resumes that contract. So me as the wholesaler, now I still have this contract that I can send out to somebody else. Maybe there's somebody in the second position. This cash buyer was first up the bat, said he wanted it, raised his hand first and said, hey, I'll take it, but then didn't perform. Somebody else was in second. So then you just go back to that person in a second and say, hey, buyer didn't perform, do you still want this deal? They say yes, then you go back through this process all over again, okay? Um, then also we have that the assignor receives a copy of the settlement statement from the title company or the closing attorney. This is where you can just track your paperwork and keep up with your paperwork on the properties that close and then for tax time and everything like that, you can show um, valid transmission of that of that contract and that deal. Um, both date and sign the assignment agreement. So you're gonna sign, your cash buyer is gonna sign, and then you submit that to the title company, title company or closing attorney. That's basically it one page assignment agreement very simple um we've closed numerous deals with this assignment agreement haven't had any problems with any of our buyers or sellers um and again this is just on assignments this is not discussing double closes um or anything like that so i hope this information was helpful for you again you can find that assignment contract and all of this information on um, equityrealestateblog.com, equityrealestateblog.com. I'm Marcus Maloney, the assignment king and the equity king. Come and see, look at the um, blog. There's quality information there. We go over some of the deals that we've done. We've went over 
uh, direct mail metrics. We go over assignment agreements, contracts. Um, there's a free book for newbies getting started absolutely free uh, it's called the bird dog bible for those getting started that don't have much money go and see we try and provide all of this information free of charge and um again if you like this information and you like our channel please subscribe below and also if this is valuable information for you please give us a like and share it all right marcus equity king signing off